Trump was taking from America with both hands and leaving the rest of us with the bill. Her only method of making money is by selling government favors and granting access to special interests. Those are the kind of issues we thought Trump and Clinton would be talking about in tonight's debate before the explosive leaks of his tape about women and her speeches to Wall Street. And we're back now with the panel. Well, Maureen, we finally got to see what, Maure, uh, what uh, Maureen, what Hillary Clinton was hiding in the transcripts of those big money closed door speeches to Wall Street. Talk about open borders, open trade, uh, that the people who know best how to regulate Wall Street are the people who work on Wall Street. How damaging to Clinton with just four weeks to go in this campaign? I think it would have been lethal during the primaries, but now not so much because, you know, in many ways she is the GOP candidate. She's the one who cuddles up to hedge funds and, and she's the shill of Wall Street. So it's only what we already knew. But what about the argument that this speaks to, you know, whether you like the policy or don't like the policy, that she's not honest and she's not trustworthy? Well, wow. So uh, Hillary Clinton will do and say anything to win. That's not a surprise. And as usual, Donald Trump drags all his Acme dynamite to the center of the stage and blows it up so that no one can pay attention to anything bad about Hillary. A good reference to the Roadrunner <laughs> cartoons, for those who may have missed it. Uh, Jason, there was also a passage in, in one of her big money speeches in which Clinton invokes Lincoln fighting for the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery and saying uh, you need both a public and a private position. This, this goes to the core, as I was talking to Maureen, about what people don't trust about this woman. It does. She talks out of both sides of her mouth, depending on the audience in front of her. Um, but again, the, in, the, in the primary, I think Maureen's right, in the primary, this would have been much more damaging. Uh, it may still do some damage to those millennial voters who she lost because they don't trust the establishment candidates because they talk out of both sides of their mouth. But again, I think now that we've moved to the general election, and particularly since there are still so many disaffected Republican moderates who can't stomach Donald Trump, listening to her talk about trade, immigration, denouncing Edward Snowden, I think that might work to her advantage, actually. What, what strikes me, really, is still what she charges for these speeches more than what she said. The, the, the way that the Clintons have traded on, on their public service to enrich themselves, more than $20 million for these speeches over a couple of years, that still boggles the mind to me. Juan, your thoughts about Hillary Clinton's speeches, what we learned about them in these hacked emails? Well, I don't think it changes anybody's view. I think I'm just reiterating what we've heard from Jason and Maureen here, because I think that people hearing this say, she's the one who said that TPP, the current trade deal, uh, is the gold standard before she changed. But she changed in the middle of the primary campaign and to that extent has adjusted to the Bernie Sanders followers and to the Democratic Party base in terms of being more uh, restrictive in terms of trade deals. But, but, but I guess what I'm asking is this. We, we knew that, that Donald Trump said lewd things about women and yet somehow this tape seems to be a game changer. We knew that Hillary Clinton had played double games on a lot of these issues, but somehow you don't seem to think that these transcripts are a game changer. Why not? I don't think it has the same impact. In the case of Trump, you're right. I mean, clearly he had a long history of saying offensive things about women, and I could go on, and it's, it's offensive things about blacks, Mexicans, disabled, and on. But I think in this case, what you're viewing, you're seeing at this moment in the campaign, there's a specific group of undecided voters that's going to decide this thing, and I think in large part it's suburban white women who lean to the right. And where are those women at this moment? I don't think they're going to be impacted by what came out from the Clinton tapes or whatever, but they are impacted when they hear Donald Trump's language because it's highly offensive. I mean, it's not, you know, look, I, I grew up playing sports. I've been in a lot of locker rooms, Chris. I hear men say, I would like that woman or she's a hot woman. I've never heard anybody say something as graphic and hostile is what came out in that too. Which is another reason why making the debate a referendum on the Clinton marriage could backfire. How is this going to help him with that demographic? I don't think group it helps that him he's at all. Carl, struggling uh, with. Yeah. Any way that, that Trump can make the these hacked emails and the question of her honesty and trustworthiness a, a, if not as big as the tape, a memorable issue in this debate. Well, he can't make them as big because sex trumps money. Her quotes are about money. <laughs> His is about sex. Uh, so can't, can't trump that. 
But uh, but what, what what another thing is this is obscuring a second set of scandals that are worth bringing up. Came out this past week that two of her aides were given immunity uh, in the in the investigation of her email server, and their laptops were destroyed as part of that immunity agreement after the government took a look at them. It also turns out that Cheryl Mills has now got an official complaint with the lawyers with the group that regulates lawyers in the District of Columbia for violating quote the absolute disqualification if you participated personally or substantially in the issue at question. So she was representing Hillary Clinton, and at the same time she was a subject of the of the uh, of the FBI investigation. So. This all gets obscured. He's got to do if he's got to if he's going to salvage anything, even his own dignity out of this. It needs to be an honest, sincere contrition, and then pivot to the big issues. I'm not even certain that these WikiLeak tapes are as important as they're. They're important only to the degree that they that they help him raise the bigger issue of your status quo. You're more of the same. I'm change. I, I, I want to take this to the 30,000 view, uh, 30,000 foot view, Maureen. Will this campaign, and I, I suppose at this point it's a kind of a rhetorical question, will it ever be about issues or is it just going to be right through election day about these two outsized personalities? No, Chris, it's not. <laughs> it's We're not, not going to have a serious conversation. No, about we are heading to the inevitable end of this, which is the mad German king locked in his castle on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> wow. I disagree. I think, I think at the end of the day, voters will make up their minds on the basis of do they think she's reasonable change or is he change and she's status quo. At the end, that group that's sitting there, they knew all of these bad things about him and all these bad things about her. I think at some point they're going to say, I'm going to set these things aside for a moment and make a critical decision about whose vision is better for me at the end. But untrustworthy and paranoid beats unstable and piggish. Could be. <laughs> I, I, think, I think a lot of people, and I think we're going to see this tonight at the debate, Chris, people are interested in what's, what are you going to do for me? How do you help me? And in, in a sense, the, the audience is going to be asking less about scandal and more about, well, what is it that in your policy would allow me to prosper and my children to get a good education in America? And I think because of that, and because of her experience in doing town halls, Clinton has a big advantage in showing empathy and understanding. Trump is still on his heels, in boxing terms, still against the ropes. Yeah. But, but the, I was going to say, though, Jason, the one advantage that Trump has, people want change, and they think yeah. we're on the wrong track. They do want change, but, you know, 30 days before an election, we're still talking about the Republican nominee's fitness for office, um, not about the changes he would bring to the job in terms of policy. So can he, in 10 seconds, can he change the conversation tonight? It's going to be very difficult for him to do that, I think, tonight. Yeah. All right. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday. We'll all watch the debate tonight.